Hello, so I've made a lot of videos in the past where I talk about eBay scams. These are scams that sellers or buyers can pull on each other um, and basically leave you out of pocket. But it occurred to me I haven't given you that much information on how to actually avoid those scams and stay safe. So in this video I'm going to give you 10 tips and tricks for staying safe as a seller on eBay. I'll leave a link to my other eBay scam videos down below. They're at the very least entertaining. So let's get on with the video. At number 10, we have disclaimers. If you're selling an item on eBay, put disclaimers in the listings that are gonna put scammers off. So put things like, I record my packaging process for your safety. All items have a serial mark so I can identify the items. Things that are going to basically stop people from switching the item or trying to claim that they didn't receive it or that it was broken when they received it. But number nine, be thorough with your listings. Don't scrimp on pictures and descriptions in your listings. If something is broken or missing from the item you're selling, make sure that you describe it in the listing. Don't leave any room for scammers or unscrupulous buyers to claim that you haven't informed them of a vital piece of information. So just be very thorough with your listings. At number eight, what's safest for the buyer isn't necessarily safest for you. As a seller, the safest way to receive money is actually, believe it or not, through check or cryptocurrency or even cash. What I mean by this is if a buyer buys from you by PayPal and they bought by credit card, they can actually have the payment reversed at a later date. Now, I'm afraid there isn't really much advice I can offer you here because realistically, you're not going to be asking for checks. I think you just need to be mindful of the fact that PayPal doesn't actually protect you. Really, if you can't afford to lose it, then don't sell it on eBay. At number seven, contact eBay. So if you sell an item on eBay to somebody with an exceptionally low feedback score or even negative feedback, or you're just kind of worried about the transactions, give eBay a ring and tell them your concerns. At least get it on file so that if something does go wrong, there is a record of it on eBay's system. And if there is something very dodgy about the, the transaction, there's half a chance that eBay will actually sort it out for you and you won't end up out of pocket. At number six, change your settings. So there are actually eBay settings that you can change where you can block specific buyers. So if you've had somebody repeatedly buy things from you and causing problems, you can actually block them as a buyer. There are also options to filter out buyers who have incredibly low feedback scores or even negative feedback scores. So it's definitely worth just setting those to stop those negative feedback buyers from buying from you. At number five, recorded delivery with insurance. So it's often cheaper, certainly in the United Kingdom, to just send things unrecorded you know, by second class post or something. The problem is unscrupulous buyers can claim that they never received the item. Also, if you don't send things with insurance, then if the item gets broken in transit, then they, you really have no recourse. You're not going to get your money back. So my advice here is if you're selling an item, you should be sending things by uh, recorded delivery, things that require a signature at the other end with the right level of insurance. But obviously, if you're sending something that costs six pounds and it costs three pounds to send it recorded delivery, you're kind of what was the point in selling it? Basically, package your items properly and professionally. Now, there is something to be said for the psychology of receiving a well packaged parcel. The number of times I've received a parcel that's just been wrapped in a bin bag or full of old dirty smelly newspaper, it really puts you off when you receive an item like that. So my advice is do make an effort with your packaging because buyers do appreciate it and then they may be less likely to come back to you with a problem, they're a bit less likely to feel like they've been conned. The other advantage of packaging things professionally is that they're less likely to get damaged in transit by a postal service. Unfortunately, you have to assume these days that your postal service is gonna throw your package off a building or something. So make sure that your packaging is very robust and that your item can't get broken if it's mistreated in transit. At number three, best offers. These days, 
I don't ever use the auction format on eBay. I always use buy it now or best offer. And what I do is I put a price on that's slightly too high because somebody might pay for it, but more likely I'll get an offer which I can choose to accept or decline. Now the advantage of this from the seller's point of view is that if you receive an offer from somebody and you don't like the look of their eBay profile, you can reject it on that basis um, and then you never have to deal with them ever again. So it's a good way of filtering out low feedback sellers. It's not what it's intended for. I think it's just intended to give you a way of choosing what price you want for the item, but I found it's quite a good way to filter out buyers that you don't want to sell to. At number two, don't sell. So this might sound ridiculous, but don't sell high value electronics or high value items that you can't afford to lose. Specifically, I focus on high value electronic items because I know that scammers do actually um, focus on that area. Now, things might have changed from a few years ago, but I remember selling phones and things sort of five years ago. Before I finally sold an item, I'd always get um, a, a Nigerian scam where somebody would buy it and then tell me to ship it to Nigeria um, on every single high value electronic item that I sold. There are some alternatives if you want to get rid of your high value electronic items. You can take them into certain high street shops like this one called CEX in the UK. I think even Apple has a trade in program if you want to get rid of your um, iPhone or Mac laptop. But I personally wouldn't sell those items on eBay. At number one, don't be scared. So this really covers a lot of the items in this list. Although I've made a lot of videos in the past describing the various scams on eBay. Generally, eBay is a safe place to buy and sell from. 99% of the people that use it are part of the sort of ecosystem and they're being friendly to each other, they're being reasonable to each other, buying and selling. There are a small proportion of people who are out to scam you and a small proportion of sort of unscrupulous buyers but you can't let those people stop you buying and selling on eBay. Just make sure that you follow the tips and rules that I've set out in the rest of this list and you will be fine selling things on eBay. So if something does go wrong when you're selling it on eBay, maybe eBay will help you and sort it out for you or, you know, worst case scenario, it goes wrong and you lose your item. Um, but, you know, it's just a bump in the road. Get over it and carry on and continue selling on eBay. Now, that's the end of this list. I'm gonna leave a link down below to the other eBay videos I've made. They're mainly just describing the various scams that you can experience as either a seller or a buyer on eBay. Let me know down below if you've got any other tips, any other things that you do to avoid being scammed when you sell. Do subscribe if you like my videos and I shall see you next time for another one.